Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from ExitAutomation.com and today I am very happy to announce that Google has finally added the support of Hyper-V for Android emulators. That's really really cool. This is one of the long lasting requests for most of the developers and testers like you and me who were looking for this particular option available with us because every time while we run Android emulator and if your Windows has Hyper-V enabled then probably you are one of the millions like me who always have to shut down the Hyper-V or turn off the Hyper-V feature from Windows 10 or Windows 7 and then you need to reboot your machine and only then you can run the Android emulator which was really really pain and that one is currently resolved by Google starting to support Hyper-V for Android emulators. So just go ahead and download the latest version of Android SDK or you can download the Android Studio from Android website and then you can start working with the Android emulator with Hyper-V support. So you don't really have to turn off Hyper-V anymore. You can seamlessly work with Hyper-V for Android emulator. Let's quickly see everything in action and understand how things work. So for that, I'm going to flip to my Chrome browser. Here we go. So if you go to the google.com and if you search for Android emulators on Hyper-V, you can see that this feature released just a couple of days, I guess two days before. And this is the website, official website of Android, which shows that they have started releasing the support for Android emulator for AMD processor and Hyper-V. That's really, really cool. And you can see in the post they have mentioned that the evolution of Android emulator has gone from the quick boots and emulator snapshots through the support of the Windows Hyper-V support as well, which is the Windows Hypervisor platform, which just recently Microsoft open sourced it. And then Google took the full advantage of starting using it. And that's why now the emulator that you can see with version 27.3.8 can start to support Hyper-V in full support. So which means you can fully run the test and use the emulator in version 27.3.8 build of the Android. So just go with it and start using it. So what are the environment changes that we need to make in the Windows 10 machine apart from the current settings that you have? So just go to the Windows features and updates. So you can search for Windows features and updates here. So I'm just gonna search that. And here you can see there is something called as turn windows feature on and off. And here I have already enabled the Hyper-V in my machine. So probably if you're using Android emulator in your machine, you would have turned it off. So make sure that your Windows 10 is also professional and above. So that's when you can see this Hyper-V. If you're using home edition for sure, you cannot see this Hyper-V option there. So this has to be checked for the Hyper-V to be enabled. And another most important thing that you need to enable apart from the Hyper-V is this Windows Hypervisor platform. So you have to enable this as well. So once you enable this and once you start it, probably your machine is going to reboot because this is the full feature setup in your machine. So it's going to reboot your machine. So once the reboot is done, that's it. You're pretty much good to go with the usage of the latest version of Android emulator version 27.3.8 and then start using it. So basically I'm going to open the Android studio in my machine and I will quickly show you like how the emulator is going to look like once you create an AVD based on hypervisor support. All right. So this is the Android studio that I have. And if I go to this particular AVD manager, you can see that I have so many virtual devices available in my machine. And the one which we use for our automation testing so far is this Android 25 or new Android or something like that in my other courses of this uh, Exit Automation channel. So this is the one which you can see here. It's API level 27. This is the one which I was talking about. I have updated it and you have to have this as well. And once it is available, once you start this particular uh, emulator, it basically starts like a saved state if you have already saved it if not it is going to be starting from a cold boot if i start creating an avd here so i'm going to quickly create a virtual device for demo purpose right now and then i'm going to choose uh, maybe nexus 5 that is fine and i'm going to hit next and i'm going to choose oreo which is nothing but the api level 27 and i'm going to hit next and here i'm going to select this show advanced settings where you can select the quick boot and cold boot options so I'm going to choose the quick boot and uh, 
the RAM and other things can be there uh, remind as usual so I'm just gonna leave them as it is and this is the x86 processor architecture so I'm gonna leave that as well and then I'm gonna finish it so just created this particular uh, AVD for me and now if I start it you can see that the magic begins so basically the machine right now has Hyper-V support and you can see that it is currently running in my machine as well that's really really cool so if you go here to my windows and if I search for Hyper-V you can see the Hyper-V manager is there here you go and this is the Windows 10 uh, virtual machine so once the uh, AVD of my Android is booted I will also show you side by side like I can run Windows 10 Hyper-V machine at the same time which was not something possible before a couple of days all right seems like the Android has started and this is the first time it is booting so it takes some time to launch because this AVD itself is all new and it has booted with all the uh, settings initialized here you can see that pretty fast and pretty quick uh, because it is updating something else it is a little slower than uh, before but it is yes it is faster and now if I start this particular Hyper-V machine so if I connect this and if I start it you can see that I can run Windows 10 machine as well in the hypervisor so Hyper-V in Android is now currently being supported and there is another cool feature which I really like to show you is the option of saving the state because you know that in Hyper-V you can always save the state of the machine and then you can boot it back that's really cool which is not available in Android so most of the time once you close the uh, Android emulator it is going to close completely and w the next time once you start it is going to start all from the uh, ground up so that's how it works so now if I just go here to this particular emulator and if I close this window you can see there is something called a saving state this is really cool to see that it is currently saving the state of the emulator completely so that next time once I start it is going to be really really faster than before so I'm just going to open this uh, emulator once again so you can see that it is starting the AVD and instantly you can see that it has loaded for some reason I couldn't able to show you in this screen because it is really really uh, faster so let me again close it and hopefully next time uh, once I start it I should grab the emulator from there ah no I couldn't you can see that it is really faster to load from the saved state so it's pretty much working like how the Hyper-V virtual machines actually works so it just boots pretty fast and because it is actually saving the state so that's really cool as well so these are some of the cool new feature which is just introduced by Google and I'm really excited to see that this is one of the feature which I was looking for for a pretty long time and it is currently available right here in front of us so thank you guys thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.